Today we're going to be singing a song from the scriptures that we'll be reading. It's a song that we sing called, If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you. And we'll be reading that a little bit later in Romans 8 today. And so hope you can follow along. So I'm going to sing that. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, dwell in you. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, dwell in you, it shall quicken your mortal body. If the spirit dwell in you, it shall quicken your mortal body. If the spirit dwell in you, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, dwell in you. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, dwell in you, it shall quicken your mortal body. If the spirit dwell in you, it shall quicken your mortal body. If the Thank you for your prayers. I am uh, recovering quite well. Can't any no complaints. Uh, my wife noticed yesterday I still might get a black eye, so we'll see about that. But I'm so thankful that uh, there doesn't seem to be any other effects. Um, I'm going to sing that again. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you. Dwell in you. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, dwell in you, it shall quicken your mortal body. If the spirit dwell in you, it shall quicken your mortal body. If the The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you. Like I said, we'll be reading that when we get into Romans 8 here today. But uh, Romans 8 is a highlight. And it reminds me, it, it, it tells us so much, right? And we'll get into that. But it tells me that, uh, and it reminds me of what Jesus said to Mary and Martha when he was about to raise Lazarus from the dead, he says, If anyone believes in me, though he be dead, yet shall he live. And if anyone believes in me and is living, shall never die. Believeth thou this? So that's the, the phrase that you can think of when we read through Romans 8. Do you believe this? I believe this, and I pray that God would help my unbelief. So let's read from Romans 8. I'm reading from my King James, if you want to follow along. But you follow along whatever translation, language, or version that you want, as long as you are in the Holy Spirit, and that we're asking the author of this to enlighten us, and to help us with these things. So Father, we just pray that as we read these words, that you would help us to believe, that you would take out any unbelief, and that you would allow us to grasp hold of what you were trying to tell us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, are you ready? Romans 8. My grandpa, he used to say, you could read Romans 8 every day and still leave with something. And I believe that. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. 
For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. And here's what we sing. And I might sing it again after we're done if I remember. Maybe my morning voice will be cleared up by then. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Believeth thou this? I stuck that in there. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage, again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints 
according to the will of God. For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And that's another good spot to say, Believe thou this? Verse 29, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own Son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Wow. Isn't that a wonderful thing? We don't have to worry. You just walk with the Lord, endeavor to be led by His Spirit in everything that we do, and who shall lay any charge against the elect? It is God that justifieth. You know, if you feel to, I wish I could just turn around and just read that again. But if you feel to, read it over and just let those, those things sink in. Because these are the things that God has for us, even now. Help us. Help us to believe. So, I said I was going to sing that song again, and I will. Maybe now my morning voice is worked out. You can read along in, in the verse 11, I think it is. If the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, dwell in you. If the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, dwell in you. It shall quicken your mortal body. If the Spirit dwell in you. It shall quicken your mortal bodies. If the Spirit dwell in you, if the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, dwell in you. If the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, It shall quicken your mortal bodies if the Spirit dwell in you. It shall quicken your mortal bodies if the Spirit dwell in you. So if you're going through tough times in your physical body, even your mental health, you just trust in the Lord you follow along with him in his spirit, believe the things that he says, and then just hang in there, and you will be all right. 
God will pull you through. And uh, but just just trust in Him. Walk in the ways that you know, and uh, it'll it'll be all right. Because we have a big God who's in charge of things, and you are a joint heir with Christ in all these things. So praise the Lord. Thanks so much for following along this morning with the song and, and reading in Romans 8. Hope it was a blessing. I hope this time helps you as it does with me, with my walk with the Lord. Pray that it draws us closer to Him and makes us more like Him and makes us of a heart that can believe these things that we are being taught in the Scriptures. So praise the Lord. Have a great day. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.